Hey, beautiful people, photo chat here. Today I'm at downtown Orlando, Lake Eola, and I'm here for Barktoberfest. Barktoberfest is an animal event. People come out here with their dogs, support nonprofits, and it's a great time all around. Plus, it happens to be a beautiful morning, and I have my Q3, so my hope is I can get some awesome chatty pictures. The event is gonna start in a few minutes, but I wanna use this opportunity to make a video that's been on my mind for some time. And I wanna do two things in this video, beautiful people. Talk about my experience with the Q3 so far, it's been a few months, and also talk about how one can make a great camera even better. So the Q3, I bought this from eBay for about 6,000 trash tokens. And believe it or not, this was actually imported from Japan. I bought it from a Japanese seller. Works great, no issues. And if you're not familiar with the specs, the Leica Q3, the reason why it commands the price tag that it does, is that it does so many things well. Full frame, 60 megapixels. There's two versions. I happen to have the 28 Sumalux lens, and there's a 43 millimeter lens. It's hybrid, meaning it takes both photo and video. The video can go 8K, 30 frames per second. 4K, I believe 60 frames per second. Don't quote me on that, it might be 30. And the quality is awesome. The body, probably one of the best camera bodies out there today. I love just holding this. It's built like a tank. And believe it or not, I probably shouldn't do this, but I do. If I come across another photographer and they ask me, hey, what kind of camera is that? I let them hold it so they could experience it for themselves. It's just an experience that I believe every photographer should experience at least once in their lives. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. So the Q3 does so many things right, but I wanna talk about some of the flaws that I see in it. And depending on who you ask, these aren't flaws, but to me they are. So there's three philosophies you can apply to make something better. You can take what it does and you can make it do that even better. You can add new features, make it do new tricks, or you can minimize the flaws. And in the case for the Q3, again, it does so many things right, but the flaws after you've used it for a bit are flaws that really detract from the experience. So the flaws. Three things in my mind that if Laika were to address this, possibly for the next iteration of the Q4, they would have an absolute bestseller. And I'm convinced about this. So the first, the Q3 has a macro feature, meaning if you adjust the ring, you're now able to take much closer, much closer pictures. Now that's good and bad. It's good because you're able to do that with one lens. Now I mention that because I've had the R6 and the R5 and for example, if you have the Canon RF100, that's a macro lens, it allows you to get really, really close to your subject and take macro shots. To Q, to Q3 with that macro feature, you're able to do that. However, you're not able to do it to the extent you would if you had a devoted macro lens. And that's because you can only get so close with a Q3 before you start to really experience the limitations of the macro feature. And for me, it feels like a half measure, meaning, hey, yeah, the Q3 could take macro pictures, macro shots, but it's now something where you're like, wow, look at this macro shot I got with the Q3. Now that's my experience. Um, I know there's photographers, photographers out there who have been able to take some awesome shots with it. But for me, I've struggled with it. And that's because, um, yeah, there's just, the macro you get with the Q3 is not the same macro you could get, for example, with the R5 and the RF100. It's just not. The second flaw, and this is the biggest flaw, in my opinion, hands down, the video feature. Now, again, the Leica Q3, it's a hybrid. 
and that means it attempts to blend both the ability to take pictures with the ability to take video. But the Q3 with the video, for starters, if you're to try to handhold it, it's next to unusable unless you're using a gimbal, it's on a tripod, or you just happen to have super steady hands. You see the Q3 when you're using the video, as far as I'm aware, there's no stabilization if you're actually shooting with the thing walking around. It's, it's just unusable, it's shaky, and I haven't been able to actually use the video feature on my Q3 while walking with it. I just, unless I apply super stabilization algorithms to the footage, it's not gonna come out good and that's because it's shaky. Also, um, there's no built-in headphone jack. So the Q3, if I were to take video, it's gonna record external audio, fine, but I'm not able to have a devoted mic to it, okay? And I know that the, in the lack of forums, like us been trying to work on adding that feature through a download, but as far as I'm aware, they haven't been able to do it just yet. And the third flaw in the Q3 is that the support system, the community itself, when it comes to adding features to the Q3, they're pretty slow. They are, they're not as fast as, let's say, Canon or Nikon or Sony is with adding updates to it. And again, they don't need to be that fast because the Q3 is a great camera, but those flaws, um, they add up over time and they take away from the experience of using the Q3. Now, with that being said, if you want to make the camera even better, focus on those flaws, remove them in my opinion. So the Q4, if I was in charge of making the Q4, I would get rid of the macro feature entirely. And if you were to find a way to take the lens and lower the aperture to let's say 1.5, that alone would justify a Q4 purchase. A Sumilex 28 millimeter 1.5. I'm, I'm just dreaming about that lens. And it's already pretty low, 1.7. Very impressive, but 1.5, oof, man. The bulk on that would be phenomenal. That's, or you could double down with the macro feature. Meaning, hey, if I put that bad boy on macro, I'm gonna get the same experience as I would using, let's say, RF100 macro lens. But as far as I'm aware, from an optic standpoint, that is very, very challenging to do. And I'm not aware that at this point in time that could be accomplished just due to the limitations of trying to design it like that. So I will get rid of the macro feature and try to lower the aperture. The second thing is, and again, my opinion, some people may feel the exact opposite, get rid of the video get rid of the video. Yes, it can do 8K, but what I'm using right now, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, can do 4K at 60 frames per second, and it's a gimbal, and it does it at, gosh, what's 6,000 divided by 500? That's one ninth of the price. And that's a thing, that you can have these handheld pocket gimbals that record phenomenal footage. And again, what I'm using right now is the Osmo Pocket 3. I have a link in the video description box if you want to check it out. But this cannot compete with the Pocket 3. It can't when it comes to video. And you're using the Leica anyways for the photography, not for the video. So get rid of the video. I'm not sure what you can add to replace the video, but by no longer focusing on the video, there's so much other things you can now focus on the Q3. Um, perhaps you can make the sensor even bigger, which would bump up the megapixels. So hear me out. A like a Q4 with an aperture of 1.5, 70 megapixels. No video, no macro. I'm convinced the vast majority of owners with the Q3 would agree, yeah, hey, let's do it. I don't even miss the macro feature or the video feature. And just thinking about those two features alone, in a heartbeat, I will purchase the Q4. 
and a last thing, and this isn't that big of a flaw, but it does come in my mind, are, it's the community and the support features for the Q3. Now, the Q3, um, you could get like a Lux, which are just presets you could download. It's not as extensive as, let's say, the Fuji X105 with, gosh, 20, maybe 30 presets there right now, but they're getting there, which is great. But it's the little things like, at this point in time, I can only have so much presets in the Q3 as, um, I can only have so much presets for the Q3. I can't have them all, believe it or not. There's a new preset that came out. I can't remember what it is, but I can't have all the presets and that just grinds my gears. Small stuff like that. <laughs> and yeah, just having more support, having faster releases for downloads, for bug fixes and what have you. Working on those three things alone, if you were to add that on the next iteration of the Leica Q series for the Q4, you're gonna have a bestseller. So yeah, beautiful people, that's been on my mind. The Q3 is a phenomenal camera. It's expensive, but it's well worth the price if you could get your hands on one. And again, that's because it does so many things well. Amazing picture quality, tremendous lens. The body, the experience, unlike anything other. But when you've used it for as long as I have, you start to notice the flaws. And if you were to remove those flaws, minimize it, then the next iteration of the Leica Q, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. All right, beautiful people. Well, that being said, there are a lot of swans here and I wanna share some footage of it and some pictures I've taken along the way. Thank <laughs> you.